Welcome back to Connected Rheumatology. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. This is our second part to all things rheumatoid arthritis treatment. We had a lot to cover, so I needed to split this up into two videos. Here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because we believe it's all connected. If that sounds like something you're into, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, share it with all your friends and family because everyone needs to understand what's going on with their body, what medications are being prescribed to them, and that's what we're here for. We're here to answer questions and get more questions going so that you can have a more productive and effective conversation with your doctor. So let's continue rheumatoid arthritis treatment part two. All right. So we left off the last video at that fork in the road. If you'll remember, we talked about how the anti-inflammatories versus those anti-RA or uh, disease-modifying medications. We talked about why you need those disease-modifying medications in order to have a long-term strategy that's going to be successful with as little side effect as possible. And we talked about how at your first visit, you will most likely be given one of the synthetic disease-modifying medications such as methotrexate. And so where we left off is your next visit, you've taken your methotrexate, you're doing everything you're supposed to do, and you're better, but you're still not great. So now what's next? Well, that fork in the road might seem a little dramatic. I don't mean to make it sound dramatic. You can always change your mind and decide to go the other direction. But at that point, there is a decision that needs to be made. And the reason that you make that decision is going to be very individual. There are a lot of things to consider between you and your doctor as far as which direction you're going to go. One road is to add another synthetic DMAR to your methotrexate. Now, notice I mentioned, I said add, not change. For 95% of us, it will be in addition to the methotrexate and possibly hydroxychloroquine that you're already on. In some cases, depending on how you tolerated the methotrexate, if there were any side effects, they might decide to switch it. But for most people, it's going to be in addition to. And that can be, it. they can add things like sulfasalicine, you can add hydroxychloroquine if you haven't already been on it. And all of those medicines individually have been shown to be effective against rheumatoid arthritis. But together, the combination of hydroxychloroquine, methotrexate, and sulfasalicine have been found to be very powerful, almost like synergistic, against rheumatoid arthritis. And we call that triple therapy, you know, amongst rheumatologists when we're reading the literature, that's called triple therapy. Your doctor's probably not going to tell you that, but that's what it's called, just FYI. <laughs> and so that is a very legitimate road to go down and path to try to get control of your rheumatoid arthritis. Now the other road is going to be biologics. Now for most of you, especially if you're watching this video, I would imagine that you are familiar at least with some of the names and the concept of these biologics. These are new-ish medications that have been in use for about 20-25 years. There are a lot of commercials out there and so it is very common for people to at least have heard some of the names. Another reason why you might have come across their names is if you are doing any research on rheumatoid arthritis, that good old algorithm is going to show you a bunch of ads for these types of medications because they know, oh, she's looking up rheumatoid arthritis. Let me show her the new medication we have for that. And you don't have to do a lot of digging to find stories of triumph with using these medications as well as horror stories of despair and horrible side effects. And to be fair, like I said earlier, every medication has the potential of side effects. There is no medication out there that is completely benign. And it's, But believe me when I say, these medications are legit game changers. 
so much so that they have changed really the face of rheumatoid arthritis in, in the population. The way we train, rheumatologists in training, has actually changed because of these medications. Not only has our entire approach to diagnosing rheumatoid arthritis and treating rheumatoid arthritis changed because of these meds, but complications that were fairly common in rheumatoid arthritis patients just 20 years ago are largely unseen now. Hi everyone, just wanted to drop a quick note to clarify. What I'm talking about here really applies to those environments that not only have access to rheumatologists, but have access to these medications. And unfortunately, that is not the case around the world and sometimes even more locally. So we still have a long ways to go to completely eradicate some of these long-term complications from RA. And I just wanted to clarify that. All right, let's get back to it. We would teach our trainees how to identify and manage some of these complications that are seen in patients who've had rheumatoid arthritis for a long time. And now when we teach our trainees, we teach those things as almost like historical data. And it's not uncommon for trainees to finish training without ever seeing those kinds of complications. So yes, these medicines are powerful and they have done a lot of good to help change the course of a patient with rheumatoid arthritis life. Okay, so what are they? Well, they're called biologics because they are manipulated protein material that are targeted for specific proteins that are active within the inflammation cascade of what's happening inside a rheumatoid arthritis patient's immune system. Does that make sense? So as opposed to those synthetic DMARDs like methotrexate and sulfasalicine and hydroxychloroquine, which were initially developed for cancer or for infections, and yet we found that they were helpful with rheumatoid arthritis, these medications were actually developed based on the science that we were discovering as to what's actually happening with the rheumatoid arthritis patient's immune system. They're very targeted and they're very specific medications. Now, there are lots of different types of biologics and they are not all the same. Within the biologic umbrella, we have different classes and we call them based on the target within the immune system that they go after. So for example, we have TNF alpha inhibitors, we have T cell co-stimulator inhibitors, we have lots of different cytokine inhibitors. Um, so they're all different and you don't need to be worried about knowing all the names or anything, just know that they're all different. So if you use one and you don't do well with it, it doesn't help or you have a side effect, there is every reason to believe that if you go to a different type of biologic that it will help and you don't have to worry about having the same type of side effect. Okay, Ortiz. So what are these side effects? And just cut to the chase, will it give me cancer? This is by far and away the most common question I get when we start talking about biologics. And you know, anytime a new medication comes out, especially a new medication that has a completely different mechanism of action, a completely different way of attacking a disease, there are always going to be concerns, and not just from patients, but from doctors too. Thankfully, many of those concerns when it comes to the biologics and cancer have just not panned out. Yes, when these medications hit the market 25-ish years ago, there was a lot of discussion and conferences and meetings and all these things like talking about this potential risk. But thankfully, it just hasn't panned out. However, let me just say, although it, I feel like maybe it's come across and I'm like a huge biologic fan and oh, you know, like take some biologics. Yes. Okay, fine, they're game changers, but they deserve respect. 
these are medications that are very powerful and they manipulate and change the immune system in ways that we have never been able to do before. Thankfully, when appropriate care is taken to check for and prevent certain infections, and when regular labs are checked and you have your regular follow-ups with your doctor, many of the potential side effects can be avoided. But if you've ever seen a commercial for one of these biologics and you hear that long laundry list of possible side effects, it can certainly be daunting. But it's important to remember that possible is not the same as probable. Sure, I have seen side effects from biologics. Of course I have. I have seen side effects that are minor, and unfortunately I've seen some side effects that are serious. But when deciding to take on the risk of these potential side effects, it's important that you not just think about the medication, but that you think about the condition. When we're talking about rheumatoid arthritis, we know that untreated RA leads to irreversible joint damage, disability, increased risk for heart disease and strokes. And although there will always be exceptions, that path towards joint damage and disability is largely a given. Whereas the potential of the side effect is far from a given. And so it comes down to weighing the pros and cons and risks and benefits of not just the medication or not medication, but of the disease that you're trying to address. Every person will need to make the right decision for themselves with the help of their doctor. Well, I'm not gonna get into all the different names of all the different biologics and why you'd use one versus the other and all that stuff. Those are conversations that you can have with your doctors when you've kind of gotten to the point to where you're discussing biologics. Suffice to say, there are a lot. They probably certainly don't need any more airtime from me because there's tons of ads everywhere and that information as far as the particulars is out there. Aside from one class, they are all injections or infusions given at various different time points. Some are given once a week, some can be given every two weeks, some can be given once a month, some can be given every three months, or you can ex you know, extend it further than that. One thing to keep in mind with these injections are they are self-injections. So these are things that either you as the patient learn to do or you have a loved one do for you. And Thankfully, these pharmaceutical companies have come up with lots of different ways in order to do the injection so you don't need to be a doctor or a nurse to know how to do it. So yes, you can get a syringe and a needle and do like a classic injection, but they also have these pens and auto injectors and these other contraptions that make it so that you can give yourself the injection without ever having to see the needle. And so if that's a big concern for you is having to do the injection yourself or maybe you're afraid of needles, definitely talk to your doctor about what your options are because there are options. Now, another question I often get is, if I decide to go on this biologic, will I still need to take my other disease modifying medication? And for the most part, that means methotrexate. And the short answer, most of the time, is yes. At least in the beginning. So, what happens, especially when you're first trying to get control of your rheumatoid arthritis, is these medications are added on top of each other. And it can be very overwhelming because again, just three to six months ago, you weren't taking any medicine. And every time you see your rheumatologist, it seems like they're adding something else. But at the beginning, we're just trying to get control and find the right medicine that's going to help us do that. With time and care, once control of the RA is achieved, we can start to peel away some of the medicines to see what the minimal amount of medication needed to control your arthritis is. But in the beginning, it can seem like it's just adding, adding, adding. But once control is achieved, we can start peeling away. Of course, the timing of this is very individual, but just know that just because at the beginning, 
you're needing another medicine and another medicine does not mean that you will need to be on all of those medicines forever. And now I just want to say a few words about the realities of these biologics and how you get them. So there are a number of reasons why your physician might decide to prescribe you a particular biologic. What kind of RA do you have? Uh, what is your medication history? Do you have any allergies? What are your other medical problems? Um, what's your lifestyle? Um, have you been taking your pills or do you just need an injection? Are you afraid of needles? There's a ton of different reasons why your doctor might say, this is the medication I think is best for you. There is, however, another factor that must be considered, and that is what your insurance policy will cover. It is unfortunately not an uncommon occurrence for a doctor and a patient to come to a conclusion about what the next step medication is going to be, only to have that medication denied by the insurance company. And there are a lot of different reasons why it might be denied. Oftentimes, if the appropriate paperwork is done and appeals are put in both by the physician and by the patient, that denial can be reversed. But keep in mind that process can take weeks to months. I don't bring this up to make anyone angry or to make some big social statement, although of course I have my opinion, but I bring it up just to state the realities and that insurance policies and what they will cover and what they won't cover is a factor in deciding which biologic medication you're going to be able to receive. So that's it. That is a brief and as simple as possible primer on the treatment for rheumatoid arthritis, our goals, the way we think about it, what you can expect during those first few visits after you've gotten a diagnosis of RA. I know all of it is so overwhelming um, and scary. You're having to take medicines that when you Google, they say chemo or they say all kinds of scary words, um, but I hope this provides a little bit of framework as far as how we approach it. Of course, we weren't able to get into all the specifics of the specific medications and the side effects and how you take it and all that stuff, um, and perhaps that will be for a video in the future. Let me know in the comments if you're at all interested in that kind of stuff. But I hope this provides you with a framework and a general idea of the way we approach it. Um, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Please share it with anyone you know who has rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, any autoimmune condition, frankly. Even though the medications are different in the different conditions, the general strategy and framework is often very similar. So really, I think a lot of different autoimmune patients would benefit from being able to understand the way we think about this. Um, so share it with anyone you know, subscribe, like, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. Here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because you know it is all connected. Thanks and have a great day.